Oh. Ah, I'm at the camera. Ah. There we go. I'm in the camera now. There we go. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? We got a new view here. We got a new view. Um, I am trying out the uh, the DAW thing. Got a little echo in the background. Got my microphone in the front, <clears throat> so it should be louder. How's everybody feeling? What's today? Today's Tuesday? Today's Tuesday, right? I think today's Tuesday. Pretty sure it's Tuesday. Uh, what is good? Got OG in the chat. Janessa's in the chat. Hey, good morning. We got Bobby in the chat. What's good, my man? I'm still tripping out over that. Isn't that weird? That's Inception right there. It's a little tiny Quentin on top of a cup. And then, yeah, anyway. Weird stuff. Let me know if um, the volume of the DAW starts to get too loud for you guys. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do first is uh, I'm going to find a little melody to work with. I, uh, I got my tempo set to 155. I'm in my what I consider my starting template. So, I mean, if I was going to give this a breakdown... I would say uh, I would open this up for you guys just to show you what's under the hood so far. Nothing big. This is Studio One, by the way. Um, so a while back, I made a template for mixing, which involved uh, me watching a lot of things and methods that other people use. Uh, and then it, at first, I had all these like extra channels and VCAs and things like that. But the beautiful thing about Studio One is... Um, these folders can become actual bus uh, bus channels themselves, so or VCAs if you want to use them like that. I mean, so like I can use them as a top level thing if I want to, but also still like have stuff inside of them treating you know the individual tracks. So uh, I reduced that down. I got a kick, snare, 808, and hi hat to start. Um, I think I have like a little percussion kit that I put together. That yeah, yeah, like this is. Um, pretty much what I got going on for the percussions in this kit, but that can change fairly quickly. Uh, I don't have any vocal tracks in here yet or any kind of vocal effects things going. I got a bass. Yeah, I got that going. I do have a starting piano that I usually use for like writing and stuff, you know? It's um, a good way to like get yourself grounded, right? And get yourself a little starting instrument. I was playing around with a melody before I started to stream, so I got a little something in mind, but I'm not sure yet. Uh, what else do I have in here? I got a little vibey keys, key suite. You can't hear the dog? Uh, it should be picking up. Hold on. Let's do that. Do you hear it now? Let me uh, <clears throat> switch over to my uh, my stream here. Let me see if I can do some troubleshooting. Oh yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely coming through now. Okay. Let me uh, <clears throat> switch over. To Let me do a test. This is me doing a test. Oh yeah, it's definitely yeah, it's definitely. A weird test. So I can hear myself on the YouTube. Okay, yeah, that's coming through real. Yeah, that's good. So this is the first time I'm doing the Studio One setup. I also have my instruments turned down quite a bit because when I start off, I um. So like I got a med like a negative six. I meant like a negative six dB to start off so that the volume is not terribly loud, but if it's going to get in the way, I'll like uh, turn them up, you know, because I'm just starting off with one instrument. It's not going to matter. There we go. Here we go. Let's hear what the tempo sounds like. I'm going to start off with the piano just as like the beginning instrument, but it's not going to remain the, uh, the main instrument. Um, Let 
Um, I don't think that that's coming through. Okay, good. So the metronome, I don't think, comes through, which is good for you guys, because that would be annoying. So I was playing around with a, I think, a flat. What did, what did I have earlier? I think it involved, like... Yeah, you might be able to hear from my headphones coming uh, if because I got my uh, my the cup open. So if I close it, maybe it'll be fine. Oh, here, here we are with another advertisement. <laughs> oh god! Well, at least this time they're not calling people out. All right, so we're gonna try to lay that down. Uh, I think I have takes on right now. Yeah, takes to layers, replace, input, quantize. All right, good. All right, we're going to lay that down to start. Um, I got myself a fader port, so I'm starting to get, trying to get used to it. turn off loop so that I can just kind of let this go and uh, get this going all right there we go Let's see what we have that we can use out of that. Um, I know the first bit was probably not in time. All right, I'm going to go from, I'm going to say from here. Uh, but I'm going to keep what we have in this other part because I don't want to get rid of that. I'm just going to bring this forward. And... A widen this up a little bit. Here we go. Open up my piano roll. All right. Yeah, that all needs to come forward a little bit. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Good. So. That was going to round out just perfectly like a little, you know, if I was using a loop pedal as uh, Neff was teaching me and other people in, uh, in the Discord. No, nah, that's too much. It took away some of the human feel. So I'm going to turn down the range a little bit, add about a little bit of swing. Go here and see what this does to it. Does that move it too much? That moves it a lot too. Let's see what happens. The only thing I don't like is this one note right here. It looks like it's a little bit too... I don't want it to be right on the grid, but it's a little bit too off. Let's see. I think this is a good place to start. Because typically, uh, so we got this, it's either this I'd start with or a uh, chord progression, right? So this is a good place to be. And now let's get, uh, we got our hi-hat one. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and do, um, I 
to say, why does this, there we go. Do I want to do one bar? Because I'm going to just make this be, um, this is two step, I think. I'm going to just go ahead and do four bars. Just give it. Make it simple math. Uh, just to be do simple math. All right, so turn on my snap. Bam, a little quick. What is this? This is eight notes. Let's see how this breaks up in the grid. Nope, not what I want. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, and then for this, I'll make this. We'll do, um, we'll stick to two bar patterns. I don't want to make it too short. So in Studio One, you can either make like a regular pattern where you go into the piano roll, or you can convert it to, um, well, well, it's called a part. When you go into the piano roll, they call those parts, right? You can convert it to a pattern, and then you get yourself with people, and I guess Fruity would be uh, uh, familiar with. Yeah, there we go. That works for me. And then what's cool about that is uh, you can either, you can continually extend it like this, or you can just keep it down, you know, however short you want it. I don't like to do that, uh, the extending thing, because later on when I start arranging, it starts to get complicated if I want to throw in like a different variation at the end. So I like to just stick to like, you know, one or two bars if I'm doing like a snare kind of thing, because it's not going to be complicated, right? And then if I want to switch up at the end, you know, I go in here. If you uh, are in the pattern editor and you click on the inspector there, you can select your current variation and, and like uh, hit this button right here, which is basically copy, right? There's a duplicate variation and you know, you can name it whatever you want to, right? Like the person was just snare, but I can say like, uh, like uh, snare turn around one or something like that, right? Just if I want to be silly, because uh, so then um, so this is what I was talking about in this case, right? In this case, I'd only want this to be like a one bar thing because this is going to be at the end. And I can kind of sort of cheat. Hmm, that's not cheat. Let's just do this the right way. Uh, so this is accounting for two bars. And right now it's looping. Or actually, no, this is accounting for one because of how this is breaking it down. That's interesting. Oh, okay. Huh. So what I would want, I guess, is 32. Is it? Do I want 32 steps? Is that what it is I want? Yeah, I think that's what I want. So in this case, that moved that there. That shifted it. Okay. All right. So put this guy here. Boom, boom. I'm going to leave that there because that's where we had it last time. Yep. All right. So that would help me like turn around and I'll probably do a few more variations on that. Um, when I start breaking down like the sections of the song, right? Uh, just so that I'd have something to work with. Uh, so it's not the same, you know, just switching it up a little bit. Let's fill out the kicks. See what we got.
So I didn't like what I got over here. I mean, I like the beginning though. I'm gonna just get rid of that kick there. Yeah, so you got Ableton. Wait, all right, so you got Ableton and then you're gonna get Studio One. What's the other one? Um, I think I've had like, I've had a lot. I've had Logic before. I had Logic before it became like, like big, big. That was like years ago. And then I had, um, I had Reason. I still own Reason, but I don't use it. Um, I got Bitwig. I love Bitwig. It's fun to play with. Uh, but Studio One seems to be the one I can get like the most done in. I think I'm gonna get okay. What's wrong with oh? What, what do you think about it? I've never actually used BandLab. I see that it's popular though. I see a lot of people like uh, mess around with it. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make myself a little flavor in here to give give this a bounce. So I don't want, nope, don't want that the entire time. Um, going to get rid of these, and I'm going to get rid of this guy. Oh, turn off that snap. Snap is messing with me. Uh, and then I'm gonna change this actually again. I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna turn this. All right, there we go. Nah, that's too much. Um, so that could actually be this, and then take these away. All right, uh, and I would want that to be here, and then. That's my finger just looping that. <laughs> Uh, oh, really? I find that it's like that in a, in a lot of places in, uh, like, specialized communities. It's just people like to gatekeep. You know, they're not very welcoming sometimes. They just, you know, they think that everyone thinks that their uh, their poop is heavenly, you know? I don't think that's how you say that, but... <laughs> I'm going to do a little... Uh, a little fade into intensity here to help with this and I'm going to bring this one down so it'll be like a little swooping thing with the sound here there we go yeah okay so right there I would have another uh Let's see if I can get this to work the way I want it to. Uh, I want them triplets. Give me them triplets. Lots of people said that in the 80s. Don't, don't, uh, don't at me on that though. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice little bounce right there. Uh, that's a nice little bounce. So in this case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna come in light, drop in heavy. Oof! I know some people gonna come in chat and uh, <laughs> gonna like that 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 level of conversation. I'm gonna drop in light, come in heavy. Let's see. 
Ah, I knew it. <laughs> I knew he was lurking. <laughs> I was waiting. I was waiting. I knew he was lurking. <laughs> it was like it was awfully quiet in the chat. There must be a kavai around the corner somewhere. He'll be here soon, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's see how we'll switch up that second uh, high hat pattern. Oh yeah, we got some new ads in this piece, huh? Uh, okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do this. Uh, I just gotta hear my pause senses. <laughs> man just got the Spider-Man. He's like, my pause sense was tingling. Uh, I got triplet turned on right now. Yeah, all right. What does this do for me? Uh, that's not what I want. I don't think I want this. Okay. Is this going to be it? This might be it. This might be it right here. I do like that. Uh, straight, bam, got this here. And I'm gonna lead this in from here. not what I meant so maybe it is here on the grid uh, okay let's see how that feels and I'm gonna take one of these out and just so we got that that variation in there so it is not the same That needs to be there, and this can be this can be here. Hold on, I need to fix the uh, dynamics on these. Uh, I would want this one to come in, let's come here, let's come up just a little bit more. Um, but, oh, didn't mean to make that scratch pad. That's another cool thing about Studio One. So if you're working and you got yourself like pretty much a whole arrangement set up, right? If let's just say we had, we had our, our eight bar loop done and I wanted to save a variation of it. Like I could select all this stuff and just be like, and press V and then it sends it to what's called a scratch pad. And then it's just gonna, that, that idea would just live there, right? That's now its own idea. I arranged a whole song the other day. Excuse me. I had an eight bar loop, eight bar loop decked out to the tens, right? Um, nines well whatever the hell the hell you say that i'm old but i can't remember the old sayings uh and so i moved it over to the scratch pad and i finished doing the entire arrangement in the scratch pad and meanwhile the eight bar loop continued to live over here in the main arranger so you could literally take an eight bar loop put it in a scratch pad do a whole arrangement because check this out because it's we got what's called an arranger, which doesn't necessarily do anything, but put like a title in terms of, a, you know, oh, this section's called this, this section's called that, right? You have access to that here too. So like I could name, I could start just arranging this and I can then duplicate this whole section and then, and then uh, call it something else, you know, something else. And it's playing back within here, right? Like this is a, uh, 
So this is a nifty little tool to have. Um, not that I want to do a scratch pad right now. I did it by accident. I just wanted to show you because, hey, you know, make accidents mean something, right? Make accidents great again. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I think in terms of percussions, right, that's probably enough. <laughs> Come on, we laughed at me. And so let me show you something else cool about the way I have this project set up. Now, this would change if I if I picked out another sound because right now I have, I'm using one shots, so like my kick is a one shot, right? And I can take this up and... I can go whatever pitch I want to, like, right? It's tuned. It's tuned. So right now the kick is, this is a C, right? I actually did this in in um, an A flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the kick. And a lot of people don't, you know, say that this doesn't matter or, like, maybe they don't think this is necessary. I don't know. You do you, do you, you know what I mean? I'm going to do me, though. So this is a, a, a flat. Wait, hold on. Am I right about that? I'm pretty sure I'm in eight flat. Let me go back. Let me make sure before I get myself stuck in something here. Uh, G sharp. Yeah, that's A flat. Okay. All right. G sharp is also known as A flat, ladies and gentlemen. So I can either go up or go down. I think I'm going to go down. <laughs> and there's so many uh, clippable moments, I guess, in this stream, huh? Why didn't I start with the DAW from the first day, right? <laughs> now, take note of how that kick sounds, right? How it sounds with the, with, with, with the melody going on. I'm going to put it back at C real quick. Now, let's listen again. It ain't bad. It ain't. It ain't. You know. It ain't terrible. It's. It's just like. It just feels like it could be stronger, and then like, and I drop it down to where that that root note is at. Yeah. Now. Now we cooking, right? Let's throw the eight 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 oh eight in there. That might be too low for the eight oh eight though. Let's see. The first one, you like it with the C, huh? Well, uh, because that's not matching the uh, the melody notes. That's why it's, it's in, uh, hold a minute. What's going on here? Oh, well, let's see what it sounds like with C, because it didn't sound off by a long shot. No, no. She's saying no. She's saying no. Don't do that with the. Uh, with the 808. Matching a million note. Got you. Word. Okay. Got it. Cool. Okay. Undo what you just did, boy. All right. Put it back. I don't know if I like it higher or lower. Let's see. I feel like the note notes need to ring out a little bit more. So I would probably mess around with those notes a little bit to kind of like move them up and down, but what's going on with the, uh, oh, I got the vertigo on there. Okay. What is the sample that I have in here for this 808? Okay. That's the rocket. It ain't terrible. Let's see. Cymatics. Boom and 808s. Let's see. Whew. 
Let's see what this bad boy sounds like. Okay, so what's gonna be challenging now is like, I like to have bass, like actual bass lines in my stuff. And one thing I've been doing to kind of just help me kind of expedite this, cause it's like, you could get all over the place trying to like have your bass notes flying with chords from here to there and shit. And, and oh, it gets real messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my melody, but I'm not going to use the same melody. I'm just going to use this as a map for myself. Nope. Yeah. All right. Boom. And now I'm not going to match those rhythms because I don't want, I don't want it to be like that. Um, what I will do though is I'm going to experiment and see what feels good because I do want these two notes to hit because those actually feel good hitting at the same time but I'm, I'm not going to keep that in terms of like being the actual main bass line so I'm going to do a little trickery here and uh, let me slice this up here and then I'm going to do this Oh, I think I need to plug in my iPad, y'all, because it's about to die. All right, so you want to have a little bit of space in some of these like really heavy, heavy sounding sub elements because that way they can ring out whenever um, you get to the next note, right? You gotta start stop short a little bit so like the next note has time to to have time to sing I should say otherwise you won't be able to hear much. So what I could do with that as well, um, now that I'm seeing that I actually have uh, even measures here. I could kind of steal a little bit of this, maybe. Um, let's see. Um, not exactly what I had in mind. So I'm going to take this back a little bit. Um, and... That's a little bit too much. Also, the 808 is clashing, so I'm gonna mute that for now because I gotta work out a way to get these to work together. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun to work in for sure, man. Like I don't, I don't have any any complaints as far as Studio One is concerned. Um, hold on, where am I at here? Okay. Um. do this I'm gonna do this this way that might be that might be too much for a baseline <laughs> sounds like I'm uh... <laughs> yeah that's the Because <laughs> just like, I like it when I'm hearing it. I don't know, you know. <laughs> I don't know if this is what it's supposed to be doing, but I like it. 
That's hilarious. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's too much for me on this. I think what's happening here is that because I'm working at such a high BPM, I'm not used to working at that speed. So I want to got to catch those A's before they can. <laughs> All right, Kanye. <laughs> Oof. This is what I'm going to do. Bring this guy in here. I think I'm just gonna let it fly. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, and then get rid of this note here that's hiding behind there. So that's tr giving me trouble. And this can come forward here. Yo, what up, Daniel? How you doing, man? Actually, it might be just as simple as that. Actually, I like that a lot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk that down. What is this? This, is, this would be seven here. Six. Let's see if we do that. Yeah, that's it right there. That's, or at least that's what I want. And then I'm gonna take this back just a smidge. Yeah, that's a nice little lick right there. Well, boom, boom. Again, like I'm wondering, is this too low? Because it's kind of heavy. It's really sub. I think that that's just too staccato, maybe. These have to be a little bit longer. Um, also, I think there's too much attack on that let me i'm gonna take that, some of that attack back on uh on this space here what do i have going on here do i have a transient shaper i do have a transient shaper what is this set to oh the attack is not set to anything let me try this yeah i'm geeking too man <laughs> So I like that, uh, but I want this to actually vibe a little bit longer so that it feels like it's got its own identity and not just a duplicate of the melody. That's good. Okay, so we're here and then. Yeah, I think that's what I want there. Uh, let's see what it sounds like from here. Yep. Uh, 
I, uh, I've been seeing, like, some of the clips. But, uh, I, I didn't actually watch the show. I, um, it was too sleepy. Actually, I want to add another... I want to add like a note here. All right, maybe it's, this is the one I want right here. Is it that? Hold on. That's a little bit better of a balance. It's nice having a slider. I have a little slider here now that I can just like take stuff down and bring it up. What are we looking at in terms of volume level on that? Um, when I opened up the stream, this is the view I had open. The reason why I have this open is because it helps me see like where I'm at in terms of level a little bit better if I'm on one monitor. This is the original variant theme OST from Earth 203. <laughs> that thing be hitting different. <laughs> Uh, so let's see what I got under the hood here. Hey, what up, Mike? Okay, let's see where we're at. volume can come up a little no you're right it could so that's the thing when i'm arranging i, I can't account for um the mixing yet 100 percent because like that's a whole that's a whole nother bag man um one second i gotta plug in um, the ipad there or figure out how to plug it in <laughs> so that i can continue uh Hanging out in the chat. Uh, do not have the right the night. I'll be damned. I hate when this stuff happens. 
Well then, if that does, I'll just open the chat up and look at the screen. I'll charge it next time. Um, but also I have a uh, check this out, Daniel. This will this will mess with your head a little bit. Uh, where is the master? So I'm using this studio emulation thing. So watch. I wonder what the bass is gonna sound like if I switch this. It should sound a little bit thicker, I think, on your end. Um, but that's just emulation right now, because I, I gotta actually like work on the mixing itself. But, uh, it should actually be a little bit thicker, I think. I think that yep, that's just gonna die. Whatever. Let me switch this back because I like to keep it on one thing while I'm working, so I don't I don't mess with my ears. So yeah, it uh yo check this out, man. I'm a, I'm a so I got that right. Check this out. Let's go to the club real quick. I even have like a, I think I have a pair of, I have like an AirPod simulator right here. Yeah, so I hear what you're hearing. So like the drums can definitely be uh, stronger. But I'm gonna worry about that after I'm done mix, uh, arranging everything. Cause you start getting into that like right now and you're gonna get, you get lost and so. But yeah, it changes like by a lot, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I like this room right here because you get these NX10 speakers that you can mix with, which are kind of like really good for um, mixing stuff that, just making sure that something will translate well. This is probably the room that I would end up mixing in, honestly. So I could bring the levels up right and get like the the low end feeling right and stuff but but then when you switch to the uh so you got like two you have two to three different speakers for each room with the vsx thing right so if i switch to the mains those mains are heavy on the bass like the difference in sound is crazy you see, you see how yeah so basically i would bounce from room to room right and i would adjust according to what i'm hearing in each room and then when I output the track, though, it's not going to have any of that simulation stuff on it. It's just going to have the frequencies that I, I mixed into. So, it, like, in theory, it's supposed to, like, help you have, like, a, a better mix. So if I bypass all that and it's just, like, flat, you know, this is what I would hear. I think it actually would be even louder when I export it. Because this would actually completely bypass the plugin, not just, like, not just level match, so... Uh, which probably means nothing to a lot of people. That's pretty dope. Congrats, man. You, you got a lot going on. You you just like milestone after milestone. That's pretty dope. I gotta, gotta get on my game, man. That's pretty dope. That's good to see, though. I like seeing people succeed and get ahead, man. Oh, wait, I don't know. Was it the pluck? Yeah, it was the pluck. Let's find ourselves a little extra melody. I was, it was going, I think I had this. I wonder if it actually caught that because in studio one if you go to the inspector if you, if you have this turned on you have to actually have this turned on but retrospective recording is a thing so uh let's see if it actually caught it i did now you, i want you to bear in mind that like this isn't like not gonna all be on uh, playing at the same time. Um, this is not all playing at the same time. What, what it would be happening is um, 
I would use like the kitchen sink version of this to then break down uh, uh, and uh, duplicate so that I could make an arranged song. So I would take things away, you know, add a little taste here and there. And that's too loud, I think. So now, let's find some song, some uh, some sounds that might feel better. No, nope, I don't want any gun sounds. That's, uh, that's too much. Hold on. actually record or did it not record hold on no it did not all right let's see if I can get it to it
I like that. I like that it would have that melody. I don't like that arp though. Um. So I'm gonna do that, okay. Let me, um... Alright, so, <clears throat> I think that this is uh, probably my stopping point for today, because I gotta, it's 10.08, so I gotta get to my regular job, um, but uh, I think that this is my stopping point for the loop itself, because what would end up happening now is basically, um, let's see. What would I do from here? I would figure out how I would want to start the track. So basically, I would start soloing stuff. I could start off like this. So I could have a version of this that's like not the Wii O Wii O version. It's just like, it's just like this. And it wouldn't go, it wouldn't be this long. It would probably be like one or two bars. And then I would just come into a stronger version um, overall. I didn't use any strings, did I? I probably would save that for later. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get into that right now. Actually, I wouldn't even get into the piano right now. Yeah, I am trying to get into uh, sync licensing. You're right. It's, um, you know, it's one of those things. 
Oh, I think my iPad just died on me. Uh, so I'm gonna look at the uh, the chat on the screen here. Uh, oh, actually, let me see if I can open up the uh, chat on here. What else we got in there? You know, it's a. I wouldn't bring it in this slowly, but like my verse, my first verse section would probably not have a lot of the stuff in it. It probably wouldn't even have the beginning of the bass in it. Maybe I would just have like my snare. You know, and then all of a sudden I come in. Yep, sync licensing is the plan, or at least I'm gonna try. We'll, we'll see what happens. And then once you know, you like every four bars, I would probably introduce something new. This would come in. And then once I hit that hook, duh. Oh yeah, the duh's coming in just fine. Okay. So what I'm seeing from my mix is uh. My, my VIX volume on the uh, OBS meters is that I got some nice headroom on the track overall, which is good. Because uh, VSX gives me like negative six extra dB on the headroom. Uh, pause. <laughs> uh, so it gives me room to come in and mix and master after I'm. Uh... So what's this right here? This is my tape. My mix bus is here. My main out is here. I don't have any of this stuff enabled right now. Let me enable FGX2. I usually use this just for um, for glue. And then I, I won't enable other stuff right now. I don't want to get like render intensive, but if I turn the limiter on though, And turn on this this tape simulation. Get some warm warmness going. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna stop here for today. Um, this will probably be a clip on Instagrams at some point if I can edit all this shit together. But I like that. It's a nice little. Um, it's a vibe. It's a. Uh, I think it would be what we call a a scene opener. Yeah, I think that's what they would call this. They would call it a scene opener, maybe. Cause it could be like a scene opener in the show. It could also be used to like transition to another part of a show. You know, they start like, I forgot what they call that. Um, it's like a filler part, but you know, it's like B-roll and they go to the next uh, scene or whatever. But anyway, uh, what I think I'll do is I'll save this for Thursday morning and we can pick up trying to flesh it out into an entire track on Thursday morning, maybe. Uh, that way, it, it's not like a sped up oh yeah, like, you know, this is what happened kind of thing, right? So we'll swing back. Anyway, I appreciate everybody who showed up today. You guys are awesome. Uh, it's fun to hang out with everybody. And uh, this was really dope. Uh, I kind of like this more than I do, like, trying to do the piano practice. Because, like, piano practice, I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> this is fun. This is just me flowing. So, you know. Yeah, you know, I get it. I'll try to keep it not, not so sciencey and stuff. But, you know. It's fun. I hope I hope you really enjoy the tune. It's a little, you know, it's a little, a little happy, a little cheery, but some of that stuff actually would probably disappear too. Like, uh, I probably wouldn't reuse everything over and over again. Like, this is really going to change a lot from section to section. There'll probably be one section where you hear most of the stuff together, but not everything. Um, 
Anyway, guys, have a good day, all right? And uh, I'll see you for the next one. Appreciate you.